in some other places, it is called Sri Sri Chandi. Especially in the eastern part of India, if you simply say Chandi, then everybody will know that you are referring to Devi Mahatma, not to any other scripture. There is, there are many scriptures on Devi. For instance, Devi Bhagavatam is there, and also there are many hymns on Devi. But when you say Chandi, Chandi is a, one of the names of Mother. But still, if you say Chandi from the context of scriptures, then it means only this Devi Mahatma. This Devi Mahatma is a scripture, or is it a scripture like any other scripture? Say, for instance, the Ramayana, for instance, Bhagavad Gita, for instance, in Tamil, you have got Shaiva Tirmurais. Like that, in Vaishnava say, I got the Nalaya Devi Prabhupada. So there are several scriptures in each language you have. But this Devi Bhagavatya somehow stands different from other scriptures. Though all other scriptures are told by Rishis, this also was told by Rishi, Mark and Dea, to his disciple. But then, this particular C.C. Chandi, this scripture, is called Mantra Samhita. That is, every verse in this book is a mantra. So, it has got another name also. It is called Durga Saptashati. 700 verses on other Durga. That is the thing. But then, when you count the verses, you know, we are on modern days, in computer you put it, and then you count, automatically the number comes. <coughs> number you find, only just above 500 verses are there. But then, how do you call it Saptashati, 700 verses? There are no 700 verses. Then our sages say, this scripture is a little different from other scriptures. For instance, Gita has got 700 verses. Exactly if you count it is 700 verses. But not in China. So what the Rishis explained it is that this is since a mantra samhita, that means each sentence or each word is a mantra in this. So if you count from the point of view of mantra, it comes to 700. So Saptashati it is called. So the 700 verses scripture is being considered as not merely like other scriptures. This is very much meant for Parayana. Parayana means when you take a scripture, you take up a portion and read every day. So there are devotees, millions of devotees all over the world who read this is the Chandi scripture every day during the Navaratis. All the nine days, people read every day in the morning to take bath and sit down and sit before Mother Durga, light a lamp and read this scripture. The whole scripture, if you want to read, it may take about three to three to four hours according to speed. Some people speak very strangely. Sometimes when I sit here and listen to a boat is singing the scripture, it goes like a Rajdhani express. But sometimes people read slowly, then it goes to four hours. But then this scripture reading has been a very, very important part of our lives. There are many types of scriptures that we all read according to the tendency of the devotee who takes up a particular scripture and starts reading every day. So this is called Parayana. This Parayana scripture, since it is every word is a mantra, for instance, Rishi Uvacha, it starts like that, Rishi Uvacha, Rishi Uvacha. These two are mantras. One sentence only it is, that one sentence becomes a mantra. Or you will find Yadevi, Sarva Bhuteshu, Matri Bhupena, Samstita. That is one mantra. Though the verse is not complete. Then second line, Namasta Say is another mantra. Namasta Say, another mantra. Namasta Say, another mantra. So five mantras in one verse. So 
So likewise, if you count, it comes to 700 mantras in this wonderful scripture. So Devi Mahatma is considered as a very important scripture. From the point of view of Shaktas, that is the believers in the mother worship, Shaktas, Shakti worshippers. Apart from that, this Devi worship has been closely integrated into the mainstream of Hinduism by Adi Shankarasari. He came and then he instituted a mixture of all the faiths in Hinduism at that time. And he brought the Devi also into the fold. That's why in Hinduism now, the Devi worship has become a part and parcel. If you are a Shaivite, still you worship Devi. If you are a Vaishnavite, still you worship Devi. Even Devi is called Narayani in the midst of the day. So Vaishnava Tantras also have taken up this mother worship and they call Devi as a Narayana or Vaishnavi. So this Devi Tantra has become very popular. And everywhere you find people are doing this parayana, the repetition of this mantras. This book is divided into 13 chapters. Now from chapter 1 to 13th chapter, you go on reading it. But then our sages, uh, that is Martin J. Rishi, has divided the entire 13th chapters, is classified under three divisions. So the first division, Second division, third division. First division consists of chapter 1 only. Second division consists of chapter 2, 3, 4, 5. And from 6th chapter onwards to the end chapter 13, the third division comes. How did he divide these three divisions? The three divisions he divided as the glory of the first division as Mother Mahakalika, second division as Mahalakshmi, third division as Mahasaraswati. So Mahakalika Dhyanam is the first chapter, before you start this first chapter, it comes. So you sit and think of Mother Kalika, how she has been explained by the Rishis. And then you do the Dhyanam and then you start reading the first chapter. So second to fifth chapter, is dedicated to Mahalakshmi and then 6th to 13th is Mahasaras. Now, if you find this any correlation in the practical life, you'll be surprised because I was in North India many years. So I had observed from the people's lifestyle what they do. They do Navaratri process. They do Navaratri for the nine nights and they divide the nine nights into three parts. The first three nights are dedicated to Mahakali, and second three nights dedicated to Mahalakshmi, and third three nights are dedicated to Mahasaras. Even colors are associated with the mother's dressing methods. So the dressing apparel should tally with the colors. While Mahakali color is either black or blue black color, they will put the sari on the three days. Second three days, Mahalakshmi represents red. So red color sari is good. And the last three days, that is seven, eight, nine, nine, mother will be adorned with white dress because Saraswati. Why blue, black or black and red and white? It is because it represents the three moons. Tamas, Rajas, Sattva. These are the three Gunas. So in the first chapter, what we find is that Brahma, the Srishti Karta, who is in charge of the creation of the universe, he says, he prays to Mahal. What is the story? The beautiful story comes. Actually, the Devi Mahatma contains three stories. So Sattami, Ashtami, Naomi, three days, I am speaking here. So by her grace, I will tell you these three stories. Today I will take up the first story. The first story takes part in the first chapter itself. The story is very funny, sir. How it is funny? It is depicting as 
Pralaya has taken place. Pralaya means a dissolution. In the, finally, this same universe one day will be completely dissolved. And only water will remain. Everywhere water, water, water. And there, Lord Vishnu is reclining and he is almost gone into sleep. And from his navel, the flower rotus has come out and there Brahmaji is sitting there. And he is meditating. He is not doing any work. He is meditating. So this mythology it is very important for us. Every religion, if it is to be called a religion, from Vivekananda says, must contain three phases. What are the three phases? One is philosophy, second is mythology, third is ritualism. These three must be there. If any of them is absent in a particular faith, that faith cannot be called a religion. So if you see all world religions, and you will find all these three components must be there. So these components are necessary. So mythology is very important because in Hinduism, all the three are blossomed to the highest level. Philosophy is highest, then mythology is highest, and ritualism also is very highest. Every ritual, even you take that uh, agarbati in your hand and hold it this way, joining these two fingers and one thumb, and then show three times. This has got a philosophical meaning. So every ritual has got some philosophy behind it. And then to explain the philosophy, the mythology has come. So these three are important part in our religion. So the mythology comes here. What does the Rishi say? That it happened, story happened like that. One great king was there. <coughs> that king was defeated by enemies. And his own mantri, his own generals, they all betrayed him. With the result, he was dethroned. And for the protection of his life, he fled away from his kingdom. And he was running in a jungle. In a big forest was there, and he was moving. All alone, completely <coughs> disillusioned with the life. He didn't know what to do. A great king, under whose command everybody obeyed. Today, he is nobody. All alone is working. And from the distance he saw a small hermitage, a sage is living there. So when he came near the entrance, he found another man. And he asked, My dear brother, what has happened to you? You look so despondent. You see, from the face you can understand. Are you happy or not? If you are not happy, your face will be Agathin, Aradhi, Muratir, Peri. There is the power of internal. So it shows that. So it will tell you, your face will tell you whether you are happy or not. So the king asked this man, Hey, what happened to you? You feel so despondent, so bad looking. Then he said, what I can say? I am a great business. Multi crores of rupees I have been handling. Suddenly, my wife betrayed me. Not only wife betrayed, my sons went against me. And my, all my relatives went against me. And they made accounts in such a way and took all the money from me and they made me a pauper. And they asked me to get off. Quit. So I am running here in the jungle. I don't know what to do, whether to take my life off or what. So he is very much worried. So I am really going from place to place and I entered into the jungle and I saw it every day. If there is any Rishi here, let me go and ask him. That's why I came. So, Raja said, Hey, your position, my position are almost similar. Let us go and find out this Rishi. So, they came to the Rishi. The question they asked the Rishi was very interesting. They asked, they didn't ask, I have to get back my kingdom. He didn't say. The businessman did not say, I want to get back to business. What did they ask the question? That is a philosophy. Here only philosophy comes. The question was, in spite of my showering so much of love to my people, to my generals, to my mantris, and to my own queen, why I was betrayed? And this businessman also put the same question. 
in spite of me showing love and living, actually I was living only for them, for the family people. And in spite of that, the family people betrayed me. So what is the reason? Then, that Rishi, whose name was Medhas, Medha means the highest form of intelligence. So Medhas means one who has come, Medha. That Medha starts explaining the nature of this Jagat, nature of this world. This world is not someone created from somewhere sitting. The world has come out. The scientists used to say, in 18th century scientists used to say, the world has come out of nothing. But Vedanta, the Hinduism says, no, that cannot be accepted. Nothing can come out of nothing. That is our argument. If there is nothing inside the pot, you cannot bring out something. If you bring out something, then it's a magic. And the magic has got no lifespan. It is not a real thing. It is not a truth. But this universe is real for me. When I am seeing it is real, and when I am touching it is real, when I am hearing it is real, all the five senses are giving me the reality. So this universe is not the imagination. All the people, if you start thinking imaginary beings, will you be able to handle this world? So this world is real as far as five senses are concerned. So the Rishi says this world, this Jagat or the Vishwa has been held by one supreme power that is called Shakti and that is called Devi. That Devi handles this entire universe. She actually is the originator of this universe. That's why we say that there must be a God principle to create this universe. Such a huge universe cannot come on its own. There must be something behind this. Who is the creator? That creator, whoever be, you call it God. That God who originates this universe, Tvayetar Dharyate Viswam, that Brahma says to Devi, he worships and he says, Tvayetar, Etar Viswam, Tvaya Dharyate. This universe is held by you. If she leaves it, this universe will collapse. So who is holding this universe? And she, he says, Tvayetar Srijyate Jagat. This Jagat, this word Jagat is also a beautiful word in Sanskrit. It comes from the root to go, motion. It always moves. This Jagat is always moving. That's why it's called Jagat. This Jagat has been created by you. It has been produced by you. And Tvayetar Palyate Devi, Hey Devi, you are the person who are protecting this world. And finally, Thomas Sante Sarvada, all the time this universe is going to dissolve and by you only. So, there is a great power, Shakti, and that Shakti has been holding this universe, creating this universe, protecting the universe, and dissolving the universe. This Shakti is, has got two types, which is on the Ramakrishna Paramahansa, very beautifully expressed. He says there is this Maya, which is called Shakti, has got two definitive aspects. One is called Vidya Maya, another is called Avidya Maya. What is the function of Avidya Maya? Without this Avidya Maya, this Jagat will not be Jagat. We are not here. Because of Avidya Maya, we all have been closed, our eyes are closed. That means a very thin form of a, a cover has been placed before on our eyes. So we are all kept under the spell of Maya by the thin veil. And that is called Avidya Maya. And Vidya Maya is that Shakti who comes to us and by grace, showing the grace, she removes slowly the veil from her eyes. Then we see this universe as God-oriented universe. Multi-universe, multi-people we see. All of you are different, different, different. No, none of us is different from any other. All of us are 
in substratum one only. And if you can see God in everything, then that means the veil has been removed from your eyes. If you still see so and so, so and so, man, woman, man, right, everything, that means still you have got that veil on your eyes. So the first chapter gives you the beautifully it explains that who is when the two persons, that is the Raja as well as the merchant, when they ask the Rishi Vedas, what is the reason why we have been thrown out from our place? It is because of this Maya Shakti. This Shakti brings illusion and illusion is brought by this Devi. Because Devi is, she can do and she can undo and she can do otherwise also. Kartum akartum annyatha kartum. That is how our sages say about this Maya. This Maya Shakti is wonderful Shakti. So, because of her power, you all have been wrongly thinking that the people around you are yours. They are not yours. To explain this uh, idea, the philosophy, the Rishi gives a nice story. The story is from mythology, from Puranas. What is the Puranic story? The story is, as I told you started, that Vishnu is reclining and Brahma is meditating on the lotus flower. At that time, from the years of two years of Vishnu, Vishnu has accumulated dirt in his ear. From the dirt of the ear, two Rakshasas came, two Asuras. So one from right and one from left. Both have got beautiful names, Madhu Kaitava. One Asura name is called Madhu, another Asura is called Kaitava. So these two Asuras came. Asura means what? A man who is not with discipline. You know, Sur. Sur is used not in our music. So, kya bekra besur gara hai? Ye kaisa gara hai? Achha nahi lag raha hai. Sundar hai, bhoot kharaab lag raha hai. Kyo kharaab lag raha hai? Besur gara hai. So, besur we call it. So, Sur means that tuning. That tuning comes only when you have a discipline. Today morning we had a beautiful uh, music singing that songs are sung by Maharashtra Mandal members. And each instrument, harmonium, sitar, then flute, and then violin and tabla, were all according, according to the vocal, they tuned themselves. So it was nice to hear. So that brings you discipline. If you are lost with discipline, your life becomes heavy. Then you should be called Asura. Asura. That means negative Sura. So this Asura means don't think that he has got a big all this uh, you find in us children's books. Not like that. Asura is also just like us from me. They are also very beautiful people. When Anuman entered Sri Lanka, what he saw? He found beautiful women there. They are all Asuri mothers, but then they are beautiful. How you call them beautiful? Because they are also like us. Only by character you become either Sura or Asura. So this Asura, the two Asuras came. Their nature is to fight with somebody, to poke somebody and to do something disturbance. So they came down and then they were swimming in the waters. All were waters only. So what they do? So they swim. So how long you will swim? One year, two years, ten years, hundred years over. Still they are swimming. And then they suddenly they looked up and there was a small a stem, a stump was growing. Slowly it went up to the skies. And there the lotus flower blossomed and Brahmaji appeared and he is sitting there. So these two Asuras thought, let us go and fight, pass a fight with him. Because what to do? Fight is there is a fun is it? So let us have fun some fun. So these two Asuras went up and tried to disturb him. Brahma was not easily to be disturbed, he was only politician. Anyway, after a lot of shaking the stalk of the flower and he started about to fall down, then he opened his eyes. Then he looked these two asuras, this Madhu and Petava standing, and they are telling, asking him, Hey Brahma, come fight with us, let us have an enjoyable fight. So Brahma says, Look, asuras, I am a Brahmana. Brahmana is not supposed to fight. Kshatriya is supposed to fight. 
I am a Brahmana. I know only scriptures. And if you want knowledge, I can give you. But I can't fight it. I don't have any weapon also. My weapon is Japamala. With that I can't fight with you. So what you do is, just go down the road. And there, on that, he is a training position. Mahavishnu is there. Why don't you disturb him and get him off from this sleep and then fight with him? So they, when they found that the Brahmaji is not going to fight with them finally, so they came down. And went down there, they are on the waters, Vishnu was killed. This is the point that Rishi says. The Vishnu sleep was not sleep like us, not like our sleep. He calls it Yoga Nidra. That Yoga Nidra. Then, this Yoga Nidra is there, so Vishnu cannot get up. Even if Vishnu wants to get up, he can't get up because the Shakti, the Mahamaya, has wielded his eyes with the sleep, which is called Yoga Nidra. So he cannot get up. So what to do? And they are calling Vishnu, they are disturbing Vishnu, but Vishnu is not getting up. So, and then this cannot be scanned, it cannot go on for years. So, Brahmaji thought, let me invoke the presence of Mahamaya. Then he makes a stuti. Stuti means a hymn. A hymn means, one who you give a, a glory of the Lord, you say. You know, I remember, uh, these hymns are wonderful as he said. This book has got four important hints. It comes first chapter, the Brahma Suti, then fourth chapter, fifth chapter, and eleventh chapter. These four chapters contain four hymns. These hymns are very, very important. If you can't read the entire book, at least you can read the hymns. From this verse to this verse, the numbers are given. If you want, it is all available in internet. And then you can read those verses only. That is also will do good. So what happened was, Brahmaji invoked the presence of Mother. How did he say he beautifully uses the words? And then he tells, Oh Mother, please come and help us to win this Asuras over. Then Devi comes and removes that Yoga Nidra from Vishnu's eyes. Then Vishnu gives up. And then he looks at these two Asuras. They say, we want to fight with you. Okay. Vishnu has been fighting all the time, see. He has got one gada and one chakra. So two uh, weapons he has got. He has got no problem. said, okay, let us fight. And then the fight is starts. And the scripture says, 5,000 human years the fighting was going on. The fighting went on, went on, went on. In this point, that since Brahmaji prayed to Mother, what Mother did, not only she removed the veil of the illusion from Vishnu's eyes, she bestowed on the two Asuras further illusion. Already they are illusion. And further illusion she gave to them. What they did, 5000 years over, they asked Vishnu, Vishnu, you are also equal to us. Neither we can be known you, neither you can be known us. You are unable to destroy us. So we are very happy to see a level, whatever level you are playing, so we are very happy to see you. So, and that is the illusion that mother gave them. What is the illusion? They got developed the ego. The ego became so big. And then they offered to Vishnu, Vishnu, you ask any boon, we shall give you. Now Vishnu has got the habit of getting boons. He has been always giving them. So he cannot take any boon from them. But then, the first time in the history of the whole Purana, you find Vishnu asking for him. Vishnu doesn't ask anything. But then in this case, he said, okay, you are so gracious to give me boon, I will ask the boon now. Will you give definitely? The Asura said, see, we may be Asuras, but then we give our word. When we give a word, we go with that. So don't worry, ask any boon. Then Vishnu said, I want you both to be killed by my hand. That is the Chatur, you know, Chaturya of Vishnu. Everywhere, you know, Shiva also like that. He gives boon and then runs away. Then Vishnu comes and saves him. So that is the Puranic stories we find. So Vishnu has got more intelligent than that. And he said, you both should be killed by me. This is the boon he asked. Now the Asuras have given word, said, okay. Then the scripture says, the Asuras looked around them. 
everywhere water, water, water. So they thought they are more intelligent than Vishnu. So they say, okay Vishnu, one condition, we are ready to be killed by you, but only on one condition. The condition is, you should kill on the earth cloud. There is no earth there. You can just imagine. There is no earth there. There is no cloud of uh, uh, plot is there. And there, only in a dry place only you can kill. Not water. So now Vishnu also looked around. Everywhere water, how are you going to kill you? But you know Vishnu is always greater than this Asuras. So what he did? Okay. He started taking Vishnu. And he became Vishnu means Vyaptate Vishnu. Who is Vishnu? Vishnu is one who is all pervasive. That is called Vishnu. So he pervaded the entire universe with his huge body and he became huge. And the Asuras became tiny little things. And they are looking at him and he caught them and put them, placed them on his thigh. In Sanskrit, there is a pun in that first chapter. When you read that, you will see. Urvi is the word used. Urvi means a cloud of Krithvi. That is also called Urvi. And thai is also called Krithvi. So they told, you can kill us on Urvi. On the cloud of earth meaning. They meant that. But Vishnu meant, this Urvi means my thigh. So they put him on the dry thigh and then kill him. So, the story, by telling the story, the Rishi tells to this Raja and this merchant. You see, all the things that are happening in this world are all done by mother only. Mother has got many features. One feature is she closes the knowledge part and then she reveals the knowledge herself. So both these activities, that is the two powers of Maya, Mother has got. So by propitiating Mother, whatever in the state you want, you can get it. Suppose you are highly intelligent and you want to get misguided, you can tell Mother. I want your Maya to come upon me. Okay, she will say, okay, I will send my Maya. And if you are under the Maya and you feel that I am very much confiscated and then you say, oh, let me get out of this net, then you can pray to Mother and Mother is ready to help you, to take you out from the net. So both the powers are wielded by the Shakti, this Mother. And this simple story shows that by ego, we bring our own delusion and our own fall, downfall, we bring by our own ego. So the ego must not be there, rather pray to Mother and then ask her grace and she is ready to give all the rest. So tomorrow we shall again. So we shall. I think we will.